Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Tracy, and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Um, <clears throat> today, I've got some stuff to talk about. I'm not doing, this is not part of my story video, although it kind of is because it's current day stuff. But um, you guys are going to see part five of my story either tonight or tomorrow. I'm not 100% sure yet. I have it I haven't like uh, locked that down yet, but you'll see it here within the next 24 hours from now. <laughs> so you'll see that. You're going to see the next part of my haunting story and my Adriel Sigler stuff is coming. Um, unfortunately, the past week and a half have been a very, very hard, difficult time for my family. And that's what I'm here to talk about. Um, you know, part of what I want to do on here is share my life which is you know me sharing my story but not just things that i've lived through in the past i want to talk about things that i'm going through currently and you know one of those things is just the struggle of life in general and i know that so many of you out here watching this get it i know that you've um a lot of you have struggled yourselves and dealt with similar issues so it's nice to get on here and share with everybody and hear feedback and possibly ideas on how to do something or where I can go for this. Or, you know what I mean? Just kind of everybody you know, brainstorm in a way <laughs> for things. But so, yeah, um, I know a lot of you know about the fact that my husband lost his job. So he is back to work like, I, you know, he's back to work. I am talking to someone about a job now uh, that I may have from home plus uh, doing my content. So that's something I'm working on. Um, we're trying our best to get caught back up. And unfortunately, so some of you know that I have a daughter that has autism. She's uh, in the process of her evaluations and stuff. And some of those diagnoses that are coming out are OCD, um, the autism, anxiety and panic disorder. There's several issues that my daughter struggles with. Last year, um, we ended up, we moved like literally almost across the street. I can see my old house from my back porch, but across the street put us over the school district's line and we're now in a different school district, even though we are right across the street. My daughter and my son were in that school since they were first and second grade, um, and actually kindergarten and first grade. And my daughter got very comfortable. She knows everybody. She fits in well. She works well with everybody. It's a small school, and um, she did very well there. She excelled. I mean, just she did so well and loves that school. But when we moved and they said that she could no longer go there, the school that we transferred to is a very different school. It's huge. It's a lot bigger. Um, I'm talking, they have several middle schools, like in the same parking lot. There's two schools within the same parking lot. So this school is extremely different. It's... I don't want to go into a lot of the details of about this school, but it just, they have a very different approach to things <clears throat> as well as the things they teach the kids. I'm not a fan of, there's just a lot of reasons for that. Now my son went in there and thrives, 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 thrives. He loves football. That school is a very, um, known, school for having very good football team. He loves it. They've got all the things that he loves and he's made friends so easily. But my daughter's just not, it doesn't work that way for her. So last week, um, I went to, or no, that was this week. I went to the school board. I had to go to a school board meeting and ask I had to go up and, you know, explain to them the situation with my daughter and ask for them to allow her to attend their school out of district. Now, they were, they were very open and receptive to it. They understood the situation and most of them have met my daughter. 
So um, it went well. The next day, the superintendent had asked me to come in and meet with him the next morning, uh, which I did. And they were open to allowing her back into the school. However, under the terms of I have to pay tuition. And for the school year, tuition is 13000 Six hundred and some dollars, and I would have to pay biweekly payments of seven hundred and fifty six dollars. Now, had we been in the position we were in two months ago, it would it would have been nothing. It would have been like, yeah, okay, let's do it right now. But unfortunately, we're not in that position. We're thousands of dollars behind in, in regular payments and things like that just from two months of of issues with work, like not getting, um, having income, all based on his company just deciding one day they're gonna close the place down and not tell anybody until they fired them all. So um, now I'm struggling with that because I don't want my daughter to not have a good education. And I know that for her, that requires something different. So we're trying to figure it all out, but it is so hard and it's overwhelming. Um, and some of you who watched my stuff last year know that I've explained my husband worked in like railroad services. And when the East Palestine train derailment happened last year, he was one of the first ones into that derailment, helping to get it all cleaned up while it was still burning. He was there for the release of the tanker and everything and recently found out that there's a class action lawsuit that is geared towards families and first responders who were there that day and for the release and things like that. He found out two days ago about this and today was the deadline to be able to be part of that. So I was out this morning running around getting all the stuff that was required for him to be able to um, to join part of this class action lawsuit in hopes of them, which they say they're paying out first responders $10,000 for uh, personal injury on this lawsuit. So we're not sure what's going to go on with that. I know we sent the stuff in and now we'll just have to wait to see if they pay it out. So that's, you know, we're waiting on that to find out about that and if that will come through because if that would come through, that would literally pretty much pay for her tuition and all of that. Or we could use that $10,000 to pay all of our back debt and be caught up to where we could afford to make the payments every, you know, two weeks or monthly, whatever. It's just such a struggle and it it I don't I'm not a political person like I'm not out here forcing people to believe what I believe or think what I think. I do have opinions on politics in ways that people might not like. I, I don't know. Um, but I feel like so much this past year has hurt everyone, all of us in ways that I, I don't know how to come back from them. I don't, when we lived in our old house over here, it was during the pandemic and everything pr right prior and after. And I can't tell you we were doing the best we've ever done, ever. And my husband made less money at his job. Um, I wasn't making content or anything. I was literally taking care of small children at that point. And just his income alone it, it was enough for us to survive and make it through and do well to where we were able to go and buy, you know, my son a dirt bike. And we were able to go and buy a, you know, trailer to haul these things. Just, you know what I mean? We were able to do extra stuff. And the past couple of years since we've moved here, and it's really not even the big difference in income or costs of our home and stuff. It's the costs of living in general. I live in Bumpbuck, Nowhere, Pennsylvania. And when I got to go to buy eggs and they're $6 a carton or five something for a gallon of milk, 
I'm paying $300 easily. Just that's minimum. $300 a week in groceries. I have to question how in the hell do other people who, you know, because my husband had a very good income. We were able to afford the lifestyle we live. Unfortunately, because of two months, we've gotten to a point where we can we haven't been able to buy food like it's that bad because you can't afford food anymore it's a shame and i have so much i want to say about this stuff which i think is going to be podcast material because i don't care to bring that type of stuff to this what i'm doing here with my story and stuff but i have a lot of opinions on so much of what's going on in our world and our country because it's really sickening to know that somebody who was making a hundred thousand dollars a year couldn't afford to buy milk two months later like it's insanity the cost of living so yeah that's just me ranting i just wanted to kind of give you guys an update on that my family is really taking a hit right now so it's a struggle for me and sometimes I just don't feel like talking because it's I'm depressed. I'm dealing with so much. But I'm here and I'm going to make it and I thought, well, you know what? Maybe it would be a good idea to share with everybody else just how you're feeling about all this. Because I don't want to not be here making content. I want to continue making content with you guys. But when I feel like this and on days like this where I'm just not in the best of a place to talk about certain things it's just nice to be able to sit here and talk with people who totally I'm sure understand it I know that so many people get it and have uh, living it and we're just trying to get through so uh yeah <laughs> that's my complaint for the week <laughs> I apologize but um I will uh I'll see you guys tonight or tomorrow we're gonna go live I have a plan for that and my um my next videos are coming up and I have something coming out that I'm really excited to share with you all. So keep an eye out. Make sure you have your bell, your follows, all of that going on. And here comes the dog. She wanted to join in and bother the cat. Hey, hey, no, Jade, stop. <laughs> ah. Anyway, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you all so much and I will see you next time. Bye guys.